if there was something wrong with you, wouldn't you want to know? It was June 2000. I was five years old and my parents had just received my first school report. Here's how it went. Pupil name, Ryan Conlon. How are the pupil is settling into school? Excellent. Willingness to talk to teachers and other pupils? Excellent. General behavior? Very good. Attendance? Very good. Effort to learn? Fail. Ryan is a very friendly and social child. He mixes well with his peers and he is very polite. But in relation to his work, Ryan's concentration is poor. Ryan will need extra help next year in relation to his reading and his phonetics. From that day on, I would struggle with reading, writing, spelling, and standardized testing all the way through school. I was even in the lowest classes of most of my subjects. On the side, I would attend supplementary English class in order to prove my reading and comprehension. But I didn't fully understand what was wrong with me. I tried hard. I just thought I was a little bit slow or a little bit stupid. Then, 4,380 days later, it all finally clicked. I officially found out what was wrong with me and I was diagnosed with dyslexia. So what is dyslexia? You know, I wanted the same thing myself. Well, the word dyslexia comes from the Greek word dice, meaning bad or difficult, and lexis meaning word or language. Therefore, a very simple definition of dyslexia is when someone is bad with words or has difficulty with language. But a more formal definition is that it's a specific learning disability, which makes it hard for people to learn, to read, to write, or to spell correctly. And the experts may tell you it's caused by a phonological processing problem. Don't worry, I didn't understand. It's this cognitive issue that's neurological or neurobiological in origin. Don't worry, I still didn't understand. Essentially, dyslexics don't have a problem with seeing language. They have a problem with manipulating it or decoding it. For example, when you see the word advantage, Dyslexics have to break it up into three separate parts and read it as ad, van, touch, which means it takes me longer to read, to write, to spell, or just to keep up with other students in the classroom. And while some dyslexics have a mild case of dyslexia, other dyslexics have a bad case of dyslexia. It also runs in families. However, what's most important is in today's society, Dyslexia has a stigma, and it's almost always assumed to be an obstacle. But what if dyslexia isn't a, uh, what if dyslexia isn't a disability, but a superpower? According to the International Dyslexia Association, about 15 to 20 percent of the population has dyslexia. That's about one in five people. One in five people in this room. Five people in your classroom. 10 people in your company, or 100 people in your organization. But 40% of self-made millionaires are dyslexic. So it's this really misunderstood topic. Most people just think it's a reading and writing issue, but I believe it has a tremendous amount of benefits. So today, I'd like to share with you what I've learned about the three secret upsides to dyslexia and why I believe it is not a disability, but a superpower. So, the first secret upside that most people don't know about is many dyslexics are extremely creative or have this unique artistic ability. If you want evidence, look no further than brilliant creatives such as Orlando Bloom, Kira Knightley, Pablo Picasso, Steven Spielberg, and Whoopi Goldberg, who are all claimed or alleged to have dyslexia. Now, in saying that, I'm certainly not Pablo Picasso or Steven Spielberg, but my running with creativity started at a young age. My poor academic performance in school 
combined with my inability to beat anyone on the spelling test, meant that I needed an escape or an outlet. I played sports and loved music, but I still had this insatiable need for creative expression. So on the side, I thought it'd be a wonderful idea to turn my creative endeavors towards graffiti. I know, my poor parents. First dyslexia, now vandalism. But to be fair, they were always extremely supportive and still are to this day. I distinctly remember a time where I thought it'd be a tremendous idea to take markers and spray paint to my entire bedroom. Every wall, mirror, door, and yes, even the ceiling. I'd even ask some of my mates to join in this adventure. When you walked upstairs, you get this immediate hit of fumes and paint. Thankfully, today my room is back to normal. But during this adventure, I realized I wasn't alone for this need of creative expression. Some of my mates in the supplementary English class would also be into graffiti, art, making music, or other creative pursuits. Turns out, they also had dyslexia. So I wanted to understand why. Well, I did some research, and turns out, studies that link creativity and artistic talents with dyslexia span the literature for four decades. One study discovered that junior high school students who were diagnosed with dyslexia performed significantly better than their non-dyslexic counterparts. But why? Well, many authors believe that dyslexics seem to lack efficiency on the left-hand side of the brain, or they have decreased activation, which is ultimately responsible for fine detail processing, like language, logic, math, and analytical ability. But they compensate using the right-hand side of the brain, which is responsible for creativity, imagination, holistic thinking, and leading me on to my second secret upside, problem solving and trend spotting. So as I got older, I moved into secondary school and I was in a new supplementary English class. And I happened to notice that there were some people in the class that had side projects. And that made me realize that growing up, I actually had a number of random side projects. Whether that was doing graffiti on people's shoes for money, creating and selling tie-dye t-shirts for friends and families, or promoting and selling tickets to student nightclubs on Facebook. I could go on, but I won't. I'll uh, save myself the embarrassment. Nonetheless, the dyslexic in me wanted to understand why. Why, why did some students in the, in the supplementary English class have side projects? So again, I decided to do some research. And turns out, dyslexics have this unique superpower for trend spotting or creative problem solving. And what turns out, all 35% of US entrepreneurs are dyslexic and 20% of UK entrepreneurs are dyslexic. And UK entrepreneurs are twice as more likely to suffer from dyslexia than the average UK citizen. And US entrepreneurs are three times more likely to suffer from dyslexia than the average UK citizen. But why? Well, according to some groundbreaking research in the book, The Dyslexia Advantage, the dyslexics have four main cognitive advantages over the non-dyslexic counterparts. Two of these advantages include dynamic reasoning and interconnected reasoning. Let me explain. Dynamic reasoning is the ability to take and identify information from the past in order to identify future trends or outcomes. For example, this can really help people in careers with ambiguous situations or incomplete knowledge, just like entrepreneurship, finance, and business, and explains why dyslexics are so good at trend spotting and why some of the UK's and world's top entrepreneurs, including Richard Branson, Lord Sugar, Anita Roddick, Jamie Oliver, and Henry Ford, who all are claimed or alleged to have dyslexia. And the second reason, interconnected reasoning, is the ability to take concepts, information, or point of view that have no relation, and dyslexics can connect the dots. And this is why dyslexics are so good at creative problem solving and explains why they thrive in careers such as entrepreneurship, science, engineering, computers, and tech. And this brings me on to my last secret upside, that dyslexics have this unique ability for spatial knowledge, or an ability to think outside the box. 
I came to realize this when I was transitioning from secondary school into university. I had no clue what I wanted to do. To be honest, I didn't even know the best way to study for my exams. I was in the study hall and looking around and all I could see were these robots or whiz kids who were excelling in academics. I was convinced that they had natural smarts. They had a talent for doing well in exams and I had a talent for not doing well in exams. Nonetheless, I knew that I loved art class, I loved PE class, and I loved construction studies. But I also knew I was pretty rubbish at a lot of those subjects. But the process of design, imagination, and innovation excited me. I ended up designing the cover of the school's annual that year, but doing pretty terrible in my final year exams. So again, the curious dyslexic in me wanted to understand why. So I did some research. It turns out some of the world's top fashion designers, architects, and inventors all suffer from dyslexia. These include Paul Smith, Tommy Hilfiger, Richard Rogers, Kathy Kidston, and Thomas Edison, who were all claimed or alleged to have dyslexia. Let's just take Tommy Hilfiger for example. He performed poorly in school and was even perceived as one of the dumb ones. He'd even pretend to be the class clown. He was embarrassed. He didn't want anyone to know that he just didn't get it. At the age of 18, Tommy Hilfiger quit school. He decided to pursue his interest in fashion. And 40 years later, after many ups and downs in the industry, Tommy Hilfiger sold his company for $1.6 billion. Ironically, he still has trouble reading today. But dyslexia didn't stop Tommy Hilfiger from excelling in fashion design or entrepreneurship. If anything, it was the opposite. And again, I wanted to understand why. If we go back to the book, The Dyslexia Advantage, dyslexics thrive using material reasoning, which is the ability to see something and imagine what it would look like from all different perspectives, which is associated with architects, inventors, builders, surgeons, and even engineers. For example, dyslexics tend to be very good at Lego. They can see a set of blueprints and imagine what the entire house or building would look like. They could go into Ikea, see a couch, and visualize what that couch would look like in their bedroom. Or they could take a piece of clothing and imagine what an entire outfit or collection would look like. But in saying that, each dyslexic person is completely different. While some dyslexics may have this ability to be creative, or they have this unique artistic ability, other dyslexics are great at trend spotting and creative problem solving. And some dyslexics have this unique talent for spatial knowledge, or an ability to think outside the box. But why is it important for me to share all the secret upsides with you? It's because only 3% of the population believe that dyslexia is actually a positive trait. This leaves many kids feeling embarrassed, angry, or stupid. And these feelings don't leave when kids leave school. It actually follows them to the workforce. As 73% of dyslexic people hide the dyslexia from employers. And this is such a shame because most people including dyslexics, don't realize how important dyslexic thinking is for the future of work. For decades, dyslexics haven't expected to fit in to the education system and the workforce. But this is changing. The world is changing. We are entering into the fourth industrial revolution. And according to a report by EY and Maiden Dyslexia, in this revolution, the rise of automation is changing the demand for certain skills and capabilities. The need for processing and manual capabilities like data entry, math, reading, writing, and spelling are all decreasing. Meanwhile, creative and social skills such as creative problem solving, creativity, re reasoning, visualization are all increasing. This presents a big opportunity for dyslexics as all of these in-demand skills are typical dyslexic strengths. And in the future, Dyslexics will be able to help organizations bridge the skills gap 
that will occur due to automation and technology. They can even help your company thrive in the future of work. And with regard to schooling and education, 98% say teachers need more training in order to learn how to identify and support dyslexia. But before we go training teachers, the education system must recognize that dyslexia is actually a valuable way of thinking. Just because dyslexics don't perform well under standardized testing with reading, writing, and spelling doesn't mean they're stupid. Everybody has their defects. All of our brains have different structures and functions. However, with such brilliant and creative people such as Albert Einstein, John Lennon, Muhammad Ali, Cher, and Leonardo da Vinci, all claimed or alleged to have dyslexia, I believe that dyslexia isn't a disability, but a superpower. All that needs to be done is early detection. Let kids know that there's nothing wrong with them. They're not stupid. They just have a set of superpowers that haven't been unlocked yet. And it's to that exact reason that I believe that dyslexia is not a disability, but a superpower. Thank you.